Yo. Hey. Can you hear me? You listening to Hashtag WAW. What a week. Welcome to Wow, What a Week. Many of you have heard and even seen the reports of gas explosions in Johannesburg. For those of you that were concerned, we seem to be safe here at our studios in Newtown. Well, at least I think we are. But let's move things right along just in case. Welcome back to Wow, What a Week. This is Wow, What a Week. What a Week. You can't make this shit up. Our comedian guest is in the building. I love this guy. I've been a fan for the longest time. He's shown you that South Africa has got a lot of talent. He's also given in to temptation. He's a clever black with Wi-Fi and a guitar and children and a Montreux Comedy Festival Award too. So please give a wow welcome to Tats Mtawilanga. The race of the sun yes. during the day. Yes. Gone. So. I love it. I didn't know how much I loved hearing my full name until you said it. How are you doing, my dude? I'm very well, bro. Rays of the sun. Rays of the sun. During That's the day. During the day. Do you know the funniest joke I've ever heard about my name? I'm, I'm in East London. I go watch comedy. Barry Hilton live for the first time. Yes, yeah, so how old are you at this I'm, stage? I'm in high school. Oh, yes. I will go with my friend Bandi Lengnanda. We leave hostel, we walk down, we go to numbers, Barry Hilton's performing. And he's doing crowd work. What's your name? Blah, blah, blah. What's your name? What's your name to me? I'm like, Mtawelanga. Without even blinking, he goes, what does that mean? I say, rays of the sun. He goes, why didn't you tell him to fix the roof, boot? <laughs> you know how Barry is. <laughs> oh, yes. Hey, the crowd lost their minds. I was sitting there, I was like, a magician just, just assaulted me, but I loved it. You should have come back and said, we're extending. You know, <laughs> for four years, that's how it is. That's how it is. But well, yes, I live at the church and we're still extending. Um, would you say that was one of the many rays of I want to do this for a living? I, without realizing it, I only remembered that memory years, years into uh, doing comedy. Yes, and yes. I was like, no, man, my first interaction with this thing on like a, a high level. Because Barry know, Hills yes. was, was still the cousin. Yes, yes. You know when you have ads that you remember that make you remember how old you are. Because I said my cousin, and I'm like, how many people even remember that? But you're only 38, what are you talking about? No, but the advert, like it's like Yebo Koko. Oh yes, yes, yes. You yes, know, yes. that you aged like two months just hearing that, because people don't know. Do you guys know Yebo Koko? Oh, hi, Kemos. You see, I just popped a white hair. <laughs> <laughs> Yebo Koko. You did a show in Isikosa the other day. I did. It was your first ever fully look speaking Bantu <laughs> show. <laughs> why are you speaking? Why are you speaking like Kuss or something like that in a boardroom? <sighs> Tell us why you decided to do a full on Bantu show, one. No. <laughs> And what is the state of Bantu comedy? No, no, not Bantu. I'm doing a show where I'm hosting. Oh, uh, you're just hosting. Tetis Co- yeah, and Tetis okay. Coast. And I've never done that before. Sure. So, it, it, what an experience, man. Because you know what they do? They give you an English script. Yeah. That you, that is a, that you have to speak Kosa. So, it's, they, good evening. Sure. So now you've got things like coming up next. All the English is done, is translated okay, by me. Okay, so right. it's English script already. Which actually is quite hectic. Yeah. Now, I've realized now, and I tell people this, but yeah, that's what they, this is what these guys do on TV. Yeah. Which is crazy to me. They don't write in Vinak. Which is crazy to me. You must fix it. Which is crazy to me. <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> guys, I don't think you understand. Let, well, let me explain. Let me explain this in real time, Fred. Yes, sir. And I saw the taste of this because I'm hosting. It's a simple hosting show. Yeah. I stand there. I say, Molen Babugeli, Namgeli Gila Nongegu, Wow, what a week. No, Tato, fresh. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Simple. Now, when it's a movie, or like Ushaga Ilembe, for example. Yeah. Ushaga Ilembe. Ooh. When you read the credits on Shaga Ilembe, mm. And it says who wrote Shaga Ilembe. Sure. Right? The name that's there yeah. is the name that's credited and the name that's there. Sure. 
this show showed me the real experience of this is actors mm -hmm. who don't have time to think about how to act. Yeah. Because it's crazy translating a script yeah. on the spot. Yeah. And then in my head, I was like, how many black writers in South Africa mm. do we have? Vernac writers yeah. that write beautiful poetry and can write beautiful lines that we as South Africans will never have. Like, we will never have iconic Tosa lines. Mm -hmm. What we will have is, I'll be back. True. You complete me. True. Uh, Yippee ki yay, motherfucker. True. Uh, all these beautiful English written lines because they're iconic, because they're written in English. There is no ways black actors are translating iconic forever lines on the spot while shooting these epic shows. Mm -hmm. It's wild. How do we fix that? And no, don't take your time. We don't have time. This is crazy. And I'm going to say it. Yeah. When you are a black creative in South Africa and you decide you want to go into the arts. Yeah. But whatever, whatever it is, right? Sure. You enter the realm of learning how to create art, how to make the stuff, mm -hmm. blah, blah. As soon as that happens, you are anglicized. Sure. You are on your way to becoming... And it's so bad. Oh, and it's gosh. so bad that it's only later that you realize that you even think in English. You can't create the next friends for Abanda Bamnyama because you, you are... You think in English even. So then what happens is the black channels in South Africa have things like I have HIV Zambia, yeah. reality shows, nothing close to it. The office is being written. There is no black South African right now in this country writing a black show. Sure. Efana, 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 no. Name one. Game of Thrones. Name one. Mm -hmm. A Vanek one. Not a one that's going to be translated by black actors on this great, great English lines. Mm -hmm. So what we have is an industry that has never existed. We have black writers, Apem Zanzi, who will never eat. Yeah. They will never have an opportunity to create beautiful scripts. If anything, they'll only get taken seriously as, okay, we need him to come in and translate. Because oh, it's written already. It's written already. And you know what I... And we've got our favorite Bantus who are going to translate it. And now I'm hosting this show and I'm like, because yeah. I know and, and I enjoyed it so much because, man, it was coming out of me. Sure. But I also realized it's something I never do. Sure. And I also realized this is crazy that I'm doing this while they're looking at me saying, speed, cut, and I'm trying to translate what advert is. Why did you not get the script the day before? So you can translate it before you... You, you, you know what? Yeah. I, I, I didn't realize how... When I got the job, I didn't realize... This energy I'm talking with, it's something I literally... We just wrapped. The, yeah. the, the show premiered Sunday last week. This thing I'm talking about is a new experience. Sure. And then I, it blew my mind when I was speaking to actors who say, no, this is what we do. Sure. All the time. Jeez. And when you make TV, guys, you don't have time. It's like, and are you ready for the scene? You should have practiced the lines. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, Those yeah. guys aren't like getting into their art. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know what acting mm -hmm. is or what it involves. Mm -hmm. But they too, it, they too busy. How am I going to translate this beautifully written English line? Sure. To equate, and they'll always fail. Because Which is why you should get it a week or a month uh, before then. But Fresh, they actors, they shouldn't even be doing it. They should be getting a script Written in the, in, in the poetry, but but and and and, and tr but, learning that. But you also need to understand that um, even a lot of our very own actors, who'd act in their own mother tongue, might prefer the script in English so they can translate it themselves. I can because, tell you now that is not true. Because some of them probably read better English than they do their own languages. Because you hardly read your own language. Fresh. Because everything is in English. Fresh. I, I, in terms of... At the ATM, what language are you using currently? Yeah, no, I, I fucked up exactly. and, and used Tosa and, and messed up, but... <laughs> you know... <laughs> They're still paying off the debt. I'm still paying off the debt. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good point. Look, we laugh. We laugh, but it's a good point, which yeah. is why in the city, I... 
Sure. Because these actors are those guys. I am those actors. Sure. Sure. I don't. Wa- I want Tosa to win. I want the language to be written. Mm-hmm. If anything must be done, Manetti is going to This sure. beautiful poetry that's mm-hmm. been written. Mm-hmm. Do you, guys, it's, so it's if, like if we're that far with the arts. Oh my gosh! Think about how much further we are with teaching physics and biology. But let me say this: and mathematics. Let me give in, the answer fresh. In bound. Let me give the answer because yes, I don't want this to be a, a, a the wrong what's wrong what's wrong you ask yes, me what's the solution yeah. i promise you this is what the solution is i mentioned the fact that when you start studying you anglicized you yeah. westernized sure. all the people who are in the south african industry now are writing shows for about netflix and they focus mm-hmm. is english sure there is a call that needs to be had there is sure. a trumpet sound that needs to be trumpeted and black creatives it's so funny. I have names in my head that I'm not going to name. Need to turn around and we need to intentionally, intentionally. Yeah. As the, the idea that you have now, here's, 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 here's an example. The idea yeah. that you have now as a creative, mm. that next big thing that you have now, yeah. make it the language that you speak and see how much, number one, work you have to do. It's a ton of work. Right? And number two, how fucking amazing. If all of us did that and all of a sudden we were offering black channels, yeah. the reason they are putting these programs on is because we're not creating the stuff for them to buy that is dope. Mm. And so the production companies that are doing it, they're the ones getting all that money and just having me translate this thing on the spot. Because I doubt that the global hits from Korean TV were written in English. I doubt it. I doubt that the global hits from Spanish TV were written in English. The global hits. Yes. Yeah. Uh, here we are, you know, uh, pandering to uh, 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 the system. And, 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 and uh, fresh. It's fresh, actually fresh. upsetting. No, it's, 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 it's actually upsetting. The answer is here. The, yeah. the answer is, I think I'm of age. Yeah. I think because... You know, you know how it is. Like I often think about the actors in 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 in, uh, in South Africa now, when all these channels are coming and there's money, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's like, it's a time thing. Sure. The ones who retired five years ago, mm. whoa, man, you missed you missed that time. And yeah. the people who are around are just the people who are around. Sure. I happen to have stuck around, mm. and now I'm in a position where number one, I'm realizing. Yeah, you're things. in the intersection. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm talking to people like you, and mm. being on shows like this, and I'm realizing if I had to say, "Exe, guys, let's take whatever, what, 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 put away money. Can we go on a? Can we? Can we turn this whole thing around mm. and write and make?" Black entertainment, and I'm talking about the CEOs and the marketing directors and the actors who are working now, Mm -hmm. the writers who are working now, who are making beautiful English things now. We need to turn around, guys. And I promise you, that exercise, I've tried it, trust me, where I have an idea and I'm making this torsa, and it's like a whole completely different thing. It's Mm -hmm. like teaching your children, when you try to teach your children your home language and eventually go, fuck it, man. Quotini. And you speak English. Sure, sure. It's the same work that we mm. all have to do. Mm. And one by one, I'm trusting that I'm going to... It's like I'm enrolling people now. You create one thing mm. and you put it on one of these black mm. channels that, that, that produce these reality shows. Mm. But you have the talent. Sure. People, you have... I don't know. I don't want to mention names. But mm. you, you have the mega talent that is doing this. Louis C.K. did it like this. He sure. had a big show in America. Mm. All these channels wanted it. And he, and, but the problem with is they wanted to, you know, put their hands on it. Yes, so yes. he went to a small channel, mm. FX. They have yeah. nothing. Yeah. And he said, guys, I will do this show mm-hmm. and don't touch it. I'll yeah. just deliver. Sure. Louis won Emmy upon Emmy upon Emmy on this little channel called FX. Yeah. Apem Zanzi, mm. if I can get Three black writers, mm. dope writers, not just writers, sure. and actors and actresses and comedians and the dope ones. See, I'm go flipping the one that doesn't have money. Yeah. And we put on something mm. just a pr- to show. And then we and then we do that, and then it's not us who do that, and mm. then black writers have seen look, oh, it's so sad that I'm gonna say. Then the people with money see that black works yes. and put blacks to work. That it doesn't have to come from, it was in English first, and then we had to work it all down and dilute it in the process. But first, we have to turn around. 
Yeah. We have to turn around. Yeah. We we have to turn around. And I know when I make those calls and I say, guys, my sense, people are going to go, we don't have time, we're busy on this, we don't have money, but it's going to cost us the revolution, the broadcasting, the, the art revolution of South Africa is yeah. going to come from us. Sure. And that revolution is literally us turning our backs from the white that mm-hmm. we're creating mm-hmm. to create the black that does not exist, never has existed. Yeah, but that has a market. It has a market. And you see it with the shows that Abus Kumba are doing, uh, for instance. That, that there is a market, and that's what people have been hungry for. People have been hungry for the longest time to be spoken to in the language they grew up speaking. Fresh, I'm a comedian. Yeah. I'm a comedian, yeah. and I'm saying this. Mm. As comics, the thing that we're doing, the things that we are doing to build stand-up in this country is what we're doing. Sure. Skumba, uh, 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 Limpopo King, man. Dreadlocks, high man. Kalani. Mashabela. Oh, Mashabela, yes. What the hell just happened there? Mashabela, right? These guys are doing great things. Vinet Komi, wonderful. The numbers, fantastic. The mistake that now is going to be made is looking at what we're doing, the numbers that we're getting, and taking that and putting it on TV. Mm. It's not the same thing. Sure. Acting. We need black we actors need on screen. We need to intentionally Writers. Create. Not take black success yeah. elsewhere, put it on a platform that has mass and think it's going to work. I think we've done our work. It's lazy. If you're, that's all you're going to do. And I'm not even pointing figures at the producers. Yeah. This is why I say the creatives, sure. the core, we are the ones who mm. literally need mm. to turn around Absolutely. and leave that job for a week or whatever it is and make black shit. Speaking of turning around, yes. you're doing a lot of nudity lately. <laughs> Talk to us about that. <laughs> Ooh. Hey, fresh! <laughs> you took me. Yes, you took that. That took me off off my uh, off my high horse. Nudity. What do you mean? What are you talking about? You're doing a lot of like nudes, like so photography, funny. posting on oh ship a year and a half ago. You took your pants off. Gee, you almost sunk the boat. There's that. <laughs> I'm sure no one looked down. Is like you see that one. We would have left him behind. But do you know what? That's yeah. actually where it started. A year and a half ago. Yeah. Was the was the time I discovered nudes. Sure. What I call my nudes are I, <laughs> I call my nudes moods. Okay, so listen like, th- listen very carefully. Yes, yeah, listen <laughs> listen very carefully. I call my nudes moods. It's okay. like nudes for dudes. Okay. Right? And this is what I learned, another thing I learned. So nudes for dudes as in what? You're doing nudes for some easy. Oh no no, nudes for no nudes for dudes who make nudes. Jeez, okay. So, so it's, it's a community. No. <laughs> What's going on here? Put in simple English. Guys who take nudes. Okay. Their pictures are called moods, not nudes. Oh, okay. I hear you. Thank you for that. And they're, not, and they're not meant to be sexual. Or are they? So now here's the thing. Yeah. Here's what I've discovered. Sure. Let me ask you a question. hmm Your lady says to you, fresh, mm-hmm. go upstairs. Sure. When I come upstairs. Mm-hmm. Oh, she always does. Rah. And downstairs. And in the garage. And we carry on. Just in case I forgot who I'm working with. The greatest <laughs> alive. <laughs> Bro. Yeah. Uh, okay. My be- okay. Guys don't know what sexy is. Sure. We haven't been taught mm. how to be attractive, how to be sexy. Mm. Right. If a girl says to you, go upstairs, and when I get up there, I want you to be sexy. The sure. picture you have in your head is what? Uh, my Zulu leopard prints. <laughs> eh? I've got a Zulu leopard print. You have an Indian cameraman here. My brother, what is your version of sexy? Because it's not that. As a much that we've just been taught Matthew McConaughey, Shaka Zulu shit. But that... Yeah, but what's wrong with leopard print? There's nothing wrong. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with leopard print. Especially in a thong for men. For yes. But not so on get fresh. Ah, uh, okay. So now when I started taking pictures of myself, yeah. it was like the first time I was like, let me try take a... Were you taking them for yourself? I was trying to take one to send. 
Oh. But you know the first time you take, guys, you know the first time you take a nude, you don't know what you're doing. Okay. And then you take the picture. Sure. And then you see the truth. You're like, yes. That's yes, yes. <laughs> it must have been the cold water. <laughs> <laughs> that's where you're like, hey. Maybe let me change the angle. Then you do change the angle. <laughs> then you do change the angle. And you're like, ah. Then you look again. You're like, yes. Yeah, sir. It's worse. <laughs> <laughs> right? Must be the cold wave. Heck. <laughs> Now, and in the end, and I'm realizing, what the fuck? Yeah. And that's when I realize I, I actually don't know. Because I know what, I know when I look at a picture of a guy and it's, yeah, I shy when I am. Sure. He's sexy. Sure. But now when I'm looking at my phone, I'm like, why? I can't get it. And then it's something that I just got into until, guys, I'm good at it now. My moods, the arting will and I genuinely enjoy taking them and looking at them the same way I'd take a picture of a moon, blah, 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 and okay. post it. Okay. So and, and how, that's where that started. And it was it getting comfortable with expressing that sexuality. And how are your fans um, responding to your moods? Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't believe I have fans. That's a weird one to say. Are you getting DF? Let, let me tell you that's weird, for instance. Yes. I'm increasingly getting DMs from guys that like me. Come on now. No, no, true story. As and in like you, Johnny. Let me actually find one for you. Something like that. Something, or something, there's no something like that with those egg fresh. And, and, and for me, it's weird because I'm like, why would a guy say that to me? Like, Look at you, bro. Do I look like Ilashile? Like, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> no, oh my gosh. So, for instance, I got this from a guy. I got this from a guy two days ago. Don't read his name because you don't want to put a guy on blast. Okay. Uh, okay, I see. What does it say? No, read it, it out. It says I want to date you, but it's a gym picture of fresh. You, you know those gym pictures where he puts the kilometers? Will be like, <laughs> this guy really loves you if this is the picture he says this to. He says he wants to date me. Like, what is it about me that a guy could say, who's going to say he wants? You are the guy who's posting news, though. No, but you've got the, I'll hold you through the night security. Like, if I bent that way, I'd also want to lean into, you know, uh, what you got. Oh, you want, me, you want me to hold you? you I want you to hold me. Jeez. But why are you finding it weird, my? Why are you finding it... Uh... Because I would not tell someone that I don't think I have a chance with. Sorry, that was my word. I would not step up to someone. I did, I, unless I thought I stood a chance, I wouldn't step up. Let me tell you something, Fresh. Yeah. Let me tell you something about love and blindness. Sure. I hosted a show called Yang Tandana. Sure. Years ago. Yang Tandana, simple process. Yeah. You have a crush. No, I remember the show. Right. So yeah. someone has a crush and uh, the crush doesn't know that. Yeah. They come to us, touch, there's this person I know. It's either someone you work with, uh, uh, neighbor, whatever the certain circumstances. Yeah. And you want to now present yourself as, I have a crush on you. Sure. Yeah, Yang, Yang Tandana. Sure. Then we have to go to the crush mm. and, and ask the crush. In my interview, I'm asking, because we have to say to them, look, there's someone in your life who likes you. Yeah, yeah. We can't tell you who. We're doing this show. Would mm. you like to be in the show? They say yes. Sure. Episode one. I'm sitting with a guy. Mm. Hey, I like man, 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 man. Okay, my brother, sure. Show me. So uh, do you guys talk? Where do you guys talk? Social media? Ah, no, no, no. WhatsApps? Yeah, yeah WhatsApp. I read his WhatsApps. Sure. You know when you're reading someone's WhatsApps and you're like, I think I'm a, I'm a funny boy, but you, sure. right? Mm. Sitting next to this guy, yeah. brimming. Mm. By episode three, this is what I came up with. You You mm. cannot tell someone who loves someone anything. Ah, uh, I hear you. Anything. Okay. You know, mm. I uh, eventually I was like, I must just host and support these guys sure. in their you must just inevitably hold. disastrous dream. The, this train is crashing, but it says, no, there's a rail ahead. But the thing is... But you know there's no rail ahead. So all you can do is hold the hand through the crash. Because this is their whole life. Sure. I'm seeing this person... You know the love that you that that we that we look for and desire. Yes, yes. These yes. guys in there, what we call delusion, have it. Mm. They're living it. Sure. Yes, they might find out the answer, but they're having the real experience of that thing. Okay. So for me, when it comes to that, I'm like, someone who sends you something like that, I I respect it and I understand it because. Should I string him along? <laughs> 
Msende li mood, boy. Msende li mood. Msende li mood. You took this in your mouth. Before we let you go, uh, you've been doing some amazing work with your sons. You've got uh, two sons. Yes, it, I do. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Just quickly, let's talk about, you know, what is this project that you're doing with your sons? Simple show, bro. Yeah. Uh, my boys and I, so I'm a divorced. Sure. And so as a divorced dad, you've got a lot of, uh, I've got a lot of dad guilt, mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. my wife and I would do bi-weekly. Sure. So... I always wonder, like, how my kids oh, are. Oh, that's why you're doing the moods. No. <laughs> okay. Fake when I'm at you. Yeah. So I always am worried about how they are. Sure. You know, always like, exactly, right? Mm. You're right? Mm. You're right? Mm. You're right? You know, mental health, you're right? Like, blink twice if yes. she's abusing you. Or blink twice if this divorce has completely fucked you up. Yeah. Or blink twice if the fact that you yeah. now have yeah. to move, you know? Sure. There's that just always that conscious mm. worry. Mm. So I started this thing at home of... Ask me questions. And, and, and in fact, speaking of the guilt, you know, as much as we know that these little people are resilient, Amen. we also put them through a lot of shit, though. And you know what, what highlights it for me? It's because yeah. I'm an adult mm. that realizes that everything I am sure. was because of those small little things that happened. Yeah. That I, like, I know, for example, through therapy, that I am, it's very difficult for me to, to uh, be vulnerable. Sure beyond a certain point mm -hmm. because I asked my cousin for a kiss one day mm -hmm. when I was nine or something and she said no. Jeez, okay. And my fucking heart broke. Didn't break. Yeah. Alcatraz. Jeez. It, it, it ADT'd, walled up, electric fences, never do that shit again. Yeah. So it's something that happened to me without my knowledge. And, and Jerry Springer's like, there's a TV show here. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Fancy, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? So my heart, my heart for, the, for many years was this. Yeah. There was a vulnerability up to a point. Sure. Up to a point, up sure. to a point. I know now I'm doing stuff to my kids. Mm. And I'm like, talk to me. Yeah. Ask me these questions. So the whole show is pretty much kids ask me questions about my life so that I can give them the inheritance of the sure. information. Sure. And, 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 and often they feel shit that they don't know how to express to you. Mm. But if you say to them, it's a safe zone, ask me anything. Yo, yo, yo. We were in Tanzania. Dad, why are there only brown people in Tanzania? Yeah. Yeah. Because your granddad didn't work hard enough. You know? <laughs> <laughs> to overcome the government? Are you kidding me? You didn't work. It's like, Dad, why did you get divorced? It's all those questions. Why is no food in the fridge? It's sure. like... Sure. But, but what I enjoy about that show, mm. what, what we're doing with them is sure. that I know, I don't care how I grew up, sure. but I know if I knew why my parents did what they did, that inheritance gives me the confidence to do anything. You'd be a different man. Oh, are you You'd kidding be a totally me? different man right now. I have one picture of my, of my grandfather, mm. one picture, yeah. never met him, sure. and he's behind a cashier. Mm. Someone told me his name mm. and that he owned a store. Sure. The spirit of entrepreneurship, I don't need to know more. Exactly. In my family. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? So those little things, and it's just information. Sure. And that's the whole inheritance. So the show is literally that. Mm -hmm. And this is the funny thing. We made it a show because uh, my friend wanted to do a uh, podcast. Sure. But they had cameras. Yes. And I wanted to see if my kids, you know, how, how they would take to being in front of cameras. First of all, for whatever, they're good, blah, blah, blah. But... What's great now is watching this show with like parents. Oh, yes. Because it gives them an opportunity. Mm. It gives them an excuse mm. to open up those conversations. Absolutely. My kids were talking about why did we get divorced? Mm. What did you say? Oh, you have to go watch it. It's a whole, it's a whole thing. Because I'm really answering. For sure. Right? But I remember... I'm sure ex-wife was like, oh, okay, is that the truth now? <laughs> <laughs> I have spoken to her, but it's so funny for many, I mean, it's seven, seven years after, for, I, I side hugged my ex-wife for the first time after we divorce, like eight years later. Jeez. It was just drop, 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 yeah. drop, it drop. Was, it was clinical. It was clinical. It was, it was hard. Zero emotion. Just... It wasn't, it, it wasn't zero emotion. Yeah. It was a lot. It was all the emotion. Oh, yes, yes. But, yes, yes. you know, in like a, I'm going to go fetch my. Okay, zero affection. The affection yep. and, and just hurt and just inability to seven yep. years the thawing happened. Sure. A side hug, hello, like eight years later. Sure. And so this show 
is that. It's just mm. giving me an opportunity to give it to my kids, but it's a show because I want to give, I mean, in this country of... Mm. You know, no reunion sex yet. No reunion, no, 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 no. Well, not... For, for old time's sake. No, no, can throwback, never... Throwback Thursday. No, 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 <laughs> throwback Thursday. No. Flashback Friday. The, Blowback out the... The flashback Friday fuck. Triple F. <laughs> Incorrect. Incorrect. <laughs> Forget what a week, what a comment. Uh, what an ex. Yeah. <laughs> what an ex. It's always weird for me to say I have the best ex in the world. Yeah. I am the luckiest. I'm I, the, I am the luckiest. I have a better ex than you. You think so? We haven't fought. We haven't side hugged. You haven't fought or side hugged? No. We even you lived, talk? We even lived together for three years. A heck? Yeah. Yeah, with zero throwback Thursday or triple F. But did you live together for three years with that? You see what I was describing, that yeah. all the emotion, but like... F- had to work through them in that process. Oh, that, that's too had, intense. Had to work through Rob it in Van that Rob Van Furen did that. Yeah. Rob Van Furen went to a divorce, mm. and him and his wife, bro... Were nesting. It was so intense. They yeah. did like, because they really loved each other, and yeah. the divorce, re- they went there spiritually. Yeah. They were doing all these like spiritual stuff, da 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 And I said to him, I remember saying to him, like at the end of the thing, they burnt the wedding dress. It was a whole ceremony of Jeez, them, a, a right? conscious uncoupling. Conscious uncoupling. Yes. And I said to him, my brother, except yeah. exactly what you're saying, being there three years while it's happening, I'm like, I sat on his lap and I said, did you have time to fucking cry? Yeah. Because healing is one thing. Sure. But it can't be straight off. It can't be straight after I've just fucking... Yeah, taking yeah. your heart out. Sure, sure. So that thing of dealing while in it is intense, bro. It's intense, but if it's in the best interest of the kids, yeah. um, for me it was about the kids. And was, then I'm gonna, and, and, and it was to say to the kids yeah. because we've decided that we are not going to be together anymore doesn't mean we yeah. hate each other or that there'll be animosity. And we don't want you to think that divorce means hatred. Absolutely. That divorce means angst. That divorce means I wish you were dead. Divorce can still mean we get along. Yeah. Divorce can still mean we are civil towards one another because it's in the best interest of the kids. I'll give you an example. For instance, the other day there was a picture that uh, trended. Mm-hmm. Um, a woman saying, "My ex-husband just got married, and I wish them all the best." And people are like, "Yo, yo, yo, yo! What does that mean?" It's like actually, it's in your kids' interest yeah. that you want your ex to thrive. Because if your ex doesn't thrive, it burdens your kids, it right. burdens you. Right. So if your ex is unemployed and you find out there's an opportunity for your ex to get a job, I expect you to say to your ex, there's an opportunity there. Because a thriving yeah. ex means the kids thrive even more. But if your, your, your ex is down and out, yeah. and when you're the hero because you've got the money, it's not in the best interest of the kids. For me, bro... The main thing is, I say to my children... We need to wrap up. Yeah, yeah. We're in trouble. And the, the biggest thing is, we're a family. Sure. Yeah. We look like this. Yeah. You because like we Van, divorced. You look like a Van Gogh. Right. Yeah. You stayed together for three years, divorced, you look yeah. like this. Yeah. But, but the thing that we were keeping sure. is make no fucking doubt sure. that we are a family. Mm. And mm. those seven years was that, and that was a season, and I think sure. I'll say this to you. Sure. It's seasons, bro. Yeah. It's going to change. Absolutely. I meet people who are like, I don't talk to my baby daddy, da 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 da, da and I listen with empathy, Yeah. and nothing but time is going to change yeah. that. It always changes. If you committed to your kids, yeah. that will work, that will, it's not gonna work out, mm. but that family that you are, if you fill whatever structure that looks like with love, so your sure. children know, mm. hey, we're, we go here and we go here, mm. but there's love in the house. Absolutely. Everything else. For my dude, where do we catch you on stage? Where do we catch you on screen? Can't catch me, guys. I don't want you to catch me. Uh, I'll tell you when. Where do we catch your nudes? But for now, yeah, that's on Instagram. For now, I was just coming to be with you fresh, honestly, bro. Dude, I miss. Uh, I miss this. You. Yeah, 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 I came here to do this. You just had a show. It's an excuse to chat to you. So can we do um, a nude together? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> And send to your guy. And send to your guy with a DM. Tell him you have a friend. <laughs> oh, I'll tell him it's my picture. I can it's your pictures. I'm gonna start sending him your pictures. No, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Say I'm on, I'm on a diet for a Netflix a Netflix period piece written by a black guy, all English. That must be translated. <laughs> Tats, I love your work, my dude. 
like I've loved your work like from day one I've worked with you like for years essays got talent like you name it and and still nothing but love and respect for I you I appreciate dude. that I'm still in your mind as that bro and I'm loving what you're doing with your kids keep it up because you're inspiring other especially dads to know that it's okay to be vulnerable in front of your kids to oh. open up in front of your kids and if not in front of them way oh. ladies and gentlemen Tats and Konzo has left cool. the building. This is Wow! What a week. What a week. Celebrity guest. Celebrity guest. And our guest is in the building. For musical performers, the achievements of our next guest might spawn jealousy and even some nasty looks. And do the However, he's such a nice guy, you can't help liking him. And this even before you hear him sing. Please give a wild welcome to Loiso. My dude. <laughs> Beautiful memory. I'll remember that forever. How are you doing, my man? I'm good, fresh. I'm, I'm fresh. Dude, obviously. It's an honor. It's a privilege. Yes, sir. Uh, last time I saw you was probably at two in the morning. <laughs> Partying. Partying. At having two. the greatest time ever. Ever. And then I regret it the next morning, which was don't, terrible. Don't, don't we always, though? That's that's the thing. I don't, like, I think at the tender age of 24, yeah. um, I think I'm realizing that I'm getting old. I'm getting old. Dude, I'm 50. What but I mean, like, just, I, can't drink, I can't drink the same way anymore. I can't drink the same way anymore. I was in uh, Mozambique this past weekend mm. uh, for H2O and um, got there at about 5 p.m. Um, we drank tequila until 5 a.m. and were on our flight at 8 a.m. So with experience, it's experience. you will manage. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure you're not drinking just any tequila. No, no, we're drinking all of it. Oh, no. Okay, that, that's, that's even worse. That's even worse. Um, no, yeah, I'm taking... Dude, have you stopped pinching yourself about the trajectory you're on? I don't even know. I'm just, it's like I'm in this car and it's just going. And, and the handbrake doesn't it's work. Like, <laughs> it's like I'm in this car and everything else is like, oh, I see, I see, a, I see an elephant on the side of the road. I see yeah. a giraffe. I see, yeah. a, you know, I see all kinds of things. Sure. You see a Garrick. And it's just you see a, a Garrick. <laughs> <laughs> I see, yeah, it's all of it is literally just part of the journey and it just, it doesn't. It doesn't get real. It yeah. doesn't get. Mm. It doesn't get in my head and be like, "This is happening now." It's always like, "Oh my God, this is mm. this is my life, and my life is moving like this." It's often a when you thing. often when you speak to creatives, at some stage on their journey, mm. they know. Yeah. That I am gonna be the difference. I'm gonna make a difference. Mm. I'm gonna fuck shit up. When did you know? You know, I think I always knew. Yeah. I think I always knew. Um, I've always imagined being one of the biggest artists in the world. I've always wanted to be the biggest artist in the world because of the message that I feel that I have to. It's like an itch. Yes, it's like yes, an itch yes. that I need to like scratch and mm, I need to mm, make sure that it mm. happens because it's it haunts you. It's like sure. there's something inside of me that wants me to get out there into the world and touch people sure. i think it just comes from that experience of knowing that i can touch people and mm. the way mm. that i sing or the way that i express myself sure. it's an art that the world needs mm. so mm. i think it just i just keep on going and i just i think i just focus on just making art that is intentional sure. and um good for my soul mm. good mm. for my soul it helps me grow who is the first person that believed in this dream because often, especially as black kids, wanting mm. to go into the arts, you almost feel like you're swimming upstream mm. because your parents want you to do this, your uncle wants you to do that. Mm. I mean, I remember I started DJ when I was 13, mm. but they thought it was a hobby. They thought I just, think it starts like that. They thought he's just tinkering. <laughs> yeah, it. yeah. But by the time I was 18, I knew I was going to be on radio. Mm. They thought it's just a hobby. Mm. By the time I was 19, mm. dropping out of law school, an aunt of mine even had me go see a traditional healer because they thought I'm bewitched oh, no. that I want to leave law school and play records. So I've always been swimming upstream, oh 
but there was one dude that believed in me that gave me my first paying DJ gig. Mm. And it reminded me that if he believes in me mm. and he's been in the nightlife for as long as he's been, mm. I must be on the right track. Mm. Did you ever have to deal with... I mean... I, I feel like I'm alone on this journey. I, I think I've, I've definitely... I've been there. Yeah. I think... Um, even when I had, you know, a hit on radio, yeah. like my, my parents used to ask me, okay, bro, COVID time. Yes. Um, I was sitting in my room. I am literally making the best music ever. Yeah. I am in my prime time. I'm making heartbreak songs. One of my biggest song seasons I made yes. during COVID. Yes, and yes. even through then, you know, like my parents were like, well, so what's what's plan B? When are you getting a real job? I'm like, yo. <laughs> I'm like, yo. What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean, bro? This is like my heart and my soul. Like, yeah. this is, you guys even come and sit. My mom even comes and sit next to my room and listens to that. Yeah. And like, I think it's just the idea of this is the way that you're supposed to live life or do life. Is yes. Get yes. a job, get a nine to five or just have get, something. Get mar married, white yeah. picket fence, yeah. have three kids. Exactly. Exactly. Get a watch when you've worked 40 years in a company. Oh. Isn't that boring to you? Isn't that boring? So I think I've I've had that. And yeah, yeah. I think when I was like 16, that's when I entered Idols. Yes. Um, that was what, se season 15, right? Season 11. 11. Season 11. Yeah. Come from Port Elizabeth. I was, I was like 15 years old. Yeah. And I was turning 16 like the next week. Sure. So I was like, guys, I'm turning 16 the next week. Please let me in. Yeah. Um, okay, they were like, cool. I did my I did my audition and then they sent because it was in PE. Yeah. So I did my audition then and then I had another audition the next day mm -hmm. and then I auditioned in front of Unati and Somizi and Gareth Cliff mm -hmm. and Randall. Oh, so you made it through the gatekeepers? First. Yes, the gatekeepers. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, <laughs> I made it past the gatekeepers and I was like, yeah, like this 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 feels good. This yeah. feels good. Yeah. This feels yeah. like something that I'm gonna do. And then in that break. When I was, I got the golden ticket because it's like three months yeah. before you actually go sure. to um, theater week and stuff. So mm -hmm. I was chilling at home. And then this one guy used to play guitar at, at the boardwalk yeah. in PE. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember the boardwalk in PE. We um, were there just the other day, yeah. Yes, was, but it changed now. It totally changed. Yeah, it yeah, was. Yeah. It's a mall now, but like it used to be an outside area. Yes, sir. So there used to be like a middle. There used to be buskers there, right? Yes. yes. So I used to busk there. Yeah. I used to busk with this guy, and he plays guitar, and then I just got that experience. What, what songs were you singing as you busked? Did you remember? Yes, One Direction. Mm -hmm. um, Give us a sample. <laughs> <laughs> What's on it? What? It was like one of. One Direction's big song though, yeah. and it's on YouTube. It's still on YouTube now. You can sure. find it on YouTube. Yeah, um, my sister took a video of me, and um, it was just like a beautiful learning experience. Sure, and I think I'm glad that I did that and got through with that. When was the proper? Now we're moving. Mm. Oh, yes. Um, so I got signed. Yeah, just after the trick. Sure, to Ambitious Entertainment. Yes, sir. And um, I didn't know anything. Like, I was 18 years old and, and um, who, I was... Who, who read the contract for you? I read it myself. I didn't even, to be honest... Okay, so you didn't read the contract. I just went past that thing. I was like, this is what I'm being sold. I want this. Yeah. And I was studying at that time and I didn't want to study. I wanted sure. to take a break. Mm -hmm. um, but my parents were like, no, we have to do something. I like, can't just sit at home. Yeah. Then I went there for two weeks. Um, studied for like three weeks and then I got a call I was in class and I got out and I was yeah. like and he was like come through to Joburg and I was like okay cool I'll come through to Joburg jeez dude I'll come through to Joburg I stuck it out for two years in that law school <laughs> I wish I was brave as you <laughs> <laughs> oh no like I feel I feel terrible every time I think about it yeah. but I, it needed to happen it sure, was, I sure. needed to get out of class and be a musician yeah um so i got the call and i was like i'm gonna come and i took like a month or two i didn't go yeah. um because he was like you gotta pay for your own flights and sure, everything sure. i was like okay but i never went and mm -hmm. then i sent him a song once then he answered and he was like he called me he's like okay i'm gonna book you a flight to come through sure sure i was like okay mm -hmm. this this nigga's serious sure. like he was the sign 
Um, Dude, it's your fucking voice. And then I you, did. Do, do, do you blame him? Fresh. I mean, it's it's. I think in a lot of ways. Yeah. It was. It it ruined the whole. It ruined the whole experience for me. Mm. Like going in there and listening to all these promises that were made. Sure. Sure. And for me to get there after a while and don't know and wander around Joburg as an 18 year old yeah. and I'm wondering okay what must I do with kind of no direction so what have you said to your folks about this oh, trip to I Joburg? didn't say anything oh shit I didn't say anything yeah I didn't say anything to them I literally left and then I came back and then um, when I was about to move mm. I was about to make the move to, yeah. to live with my uncle yeah I was like mama I signed yeah so I'm gonna uh, I'm, no, I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm, I've jumped out deuces, of school. Deuces, y'all. <laughs> I've jumped out of school. She was like, Luiso, yeah. this is what you want to do. Sure. I can't, I can't, I can't hold you back. Yeah. Um, so she gave me that freedom and she gave me that love and assurance. So, so you, you got her blessing. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Dude, doesn't that make all the difference? It changed, so, it changed everything. It makes me. all the difference. If you, don't, if, if you don't mind me being self-indulgent for a second. Mm. The fact that my mom said, go to Joburg. Mm. And make sure you kick ass. Mm. For me, was the difference. Yeah. The fact that yeah. one of my parents mm. bought into the dream was mm. all of the difference. Yeah. I don't know if I would have been as driven had I not gotten that. Beat. It was your mom, though. It was my mom. My, my mom said failure is not an option. Mm. If you're relocating to Joburg, make it a one-way ticket mm. and kick ass. Yeah. I mean, you have to. You have to when you hear it's like... Yeah, yeah. You left home and you want to make your parents sure. proud. And so you get here, thing. and then what happens with, with Ambitious? Uh, 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 <laughs> uh, we, don't worry, we have uh, subtitles. It's crickets. <laughs> <laughs> it's crickets. It's crickets. The frustration I had. Yeah. But first, like, I was sitting at home thinking, yo. I am going to kill myself. Yeah. There's no way. Mm -hmm. I have no, I had no studio at that time and I was yeah. living with my uncle. My uncle was living in a, in a one room. Sure. Um, so we, we shared the sleeper couch and I was like, yo, this can't be my life. Sure. Like, and he's also trying to build, build himself and I'm like, he's giving me this home and I'm very grateful. And I, I call Ambitious all the time and I like, hit them, I'm like, when are we releasing a single? Like, mm, we need a single. Mm, it's mm. like, no, we're still building. We're still doing this. We're still building. And it got to a point where I was like, asking for a lot of things and yeah. it weren't happening mm. and I mean things that I didn't have to ask for mm. Mm. it was things that like that were mandatory for me sure. I was supposed to get set up in a studio with other artists mm. or other writers or I was supposed to meet people I was supposed to do things and I felt like in that whole time I was just sitting waiting for something to happen sure. so I think a switch happened in me and I was like okay I'm gonna get whatever money I get yeah. and I'm going to buy myself a studio equipment. I'm sure. going to get speakers and I'm going to learn how to produce my own music so mm -hmm. I don't have to be chasing after people. Begging people to mm -hmm. do their job. Yeah, Because mm -hmm. it was always that. I was like, guys, mm -hmm. um, can we do something? No, we're busy today. So I was like, okay, let me learn it. And and I started doing restaurant gigs. But, but also, you're a kid at the time. I'm a baby. You're a kid a in, in, in a big, bad city. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's going through your head? I even got scammed 20K. Jeez. Yeah, I got scammed 20K. I bought a car online. Didn't go check to see if it's real. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of mistake is that? Yeah, like a dude of mine, a, a dude of mine bought a brick in a plasma box because it didn't open to no. plasma. By the time they realized it's a brick. The guys were gone with his five grand. <laughs> I was like, dude, why the fuck are you buying a plasma on the streets? <laughs> That's the thing. Yo. No, because we don't know all these things. Especially like if you're coming from another city and you're like sure. and you're a child, you're naive. So yeah, yeah. you're gonna buy into in anything someone tells you. What car what car was it? It was like <laughs> it was like a little Hyundai, like yeah. one of those I somethings. Sure. And um, I was like, okay, I'm going to have a car to drive around. I told my mom. My mom was excited. My mom gave me half of the money. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to pay. Um, and then I sent the money. Yeah. And then on the day that I called to like find out where. So, so you hadn't seen a, a car at all. I'm so embarrassed. But oh, wow. I, I hadn't seen. I was a child. 
which was the bigger scam? Your music contract or the car? Oh, no. <laughs> I love that question. That's the best question ever. Definitely the music contract. Yeah. My whole life, man, it messed up a lot of things for me along the way. Mm. There's money that I have to pay back that I don't even, didn't even know how I got into that. So like, how do I get to that bill? How do I get, how did I even get to that moment where yeah. I'm like sitting there and I'm like, okay, Louis, so we're going to have to take um, these, these funds from you mm. because um, it has accumulated. Because I got bought out of the deal sure. with Ambitious. Yeah. I got bought out of the deal and they kept a little part of the, a little part of the percentage of the record. Of the publishing. And yeah. Of the publishing. Yeah. So publishing was, I wasn't bought out at all until, mm. um, until our contract ended in March. Sure. And um, even then, ugh, there's things that I want to say, but I'm, I'm going to, no, dude, speak, speak your mind. I'm going to just... Listen, is, you have two options. <laughs> speak your mind or write a song. Oh, my God. Oh my. I told my neighbor, I was like, hey, I'm going to come here and speak because yeah. this, is, this, this is fresh, first of all. And mm. I know that you understand these things that sure. you've been in the industry long enough. And yeah, there was... A, I mean, I got bought out and even now the publishing deal, it's tricky because there's monies that haven't been paid, haven't gotten statements. Mm. It's the whole thing, like... Mm. And I feel like it's it's a ripple effect. It's it's go it's going on and on until it, it, I don't know when. Yeah, it almost feels like this monkey on your back. Hundred percent. That it's over, but it's not. It's not. You, you, know, <laughs> you know what like, I mean? It's like I'm constantly fighting the battle. What's your biggest learning from your ambitious contract? No one's gonna do anything for you. Yeah. No one's gonna do anything for you. And read mm. and get people that you can trust. Mm -hmm. Um. Because coming into it, I didn't know anybody. Um, Amanda Black called me literally after I had signed. She's like, Louis, don't sign. And you're like, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm already done. I'm already done. <laughs> so like, it really put me in a bad place. But yeah. I'm happy that I'm coming out of it. Sure. Slowly but surely, like I'm coming out of that and I'm being myself. And I'm so grateful for the label that I'm at right now, Republic and Universal, mm -hmm. for allowing me the freedom to sure. create what I want to create and mm -hmm. be who I am and do the things that I want to do. You know, they very much, okay, if you want to do this, if you want to dress like this, you're going to do that. It's, sure. There's no, I'm not controlled. I don't feel like I'm controlled. In a sick kind of way, don't you sometimes feel like you needed to go through that fire at Ambitious mm. to cook you so that you are ready 100% as a musical dish 100% for the rest of the world 100% and that you might have peaked too early had you not gone through all that shit. yes sir yes sir yes sir everything everything was for a reason it was a you know, you know what I mean yes 100% I'm happy that I went through that mm -hmm. I'm happy that I went through that it wasn't nice to go through that are you able to share how much you were bought out for <laughs> <laughs> I'm this a, podcast, I'm asking this for podcast is gonna get me into. <laughs> I, I, let's keep that. Let's keep the private. Mm -hmm. Let's keep the private. But it's a lot of money, a lot of money that wasn't invested. I, I was gonna say though, do you feel no? They were paid what they no, they not deserved. At not at all. Yeah. They, they they got paid way more than they were supposed to for work that, that wasn't done. That was not done. Mm. That was not done. A lot of it was a lot of. Things that were said that yeah. weren't done. There's a lot of promises, and I think I I, I lost trust in that in that whole in that whole um, process. I lost trust for people. I lost interest in a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So I just prefer to even do music by myself. Or I mean, I feel like that's why I don't even collaborate with people sometimes. Sure. Mm -hmm. I just like doing things by myself because waiting for people or people would disappoint you. Sure. So I think I've just kind of built. That's why I'm in my room. I'm doing my covers. I'm posting it on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's in my own space. And I can it, control the energy. And and sometimes not collaborating just makes things cleaner. Mm. Just even at an, mm. at, at an admin level. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I you know what I mean? It's good for me. It's good for me. My mental health as well. So speaking of collaborations, though, but, you know, you are still doing collaborations. I mean, it's yes, not like you haven't done a song with uh, Martin Garrix. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Martin and I, yeah, 
my time as my time as one would say <laughs> <laughs> um we met in so basically we had so i i used to do covers and then i posted them out on on instagram yes sir she saw me there and he instantly followed me yeah and um i think it was like in 2019 where i sent him a text i was like i'd love to work with you you're one of my biggest inspirations because mm. always been one is of this a biggest... dm or a text this was a dm okay i sent him a dm on on instagram like in 2019 i'd love to work with you you're amazing even i used to perform martin gang songs yes yes so for him to reach out to me um was like craziest thing mm. it's like bro you have the most amazing voice let me take your number let's chat Jeez. and we went back and forth back and forth until this year when i went to new york for a writing camp that i had yeah um and then he was like i'm playing four shows at this venue i was like i think it was like forty thousand packs yeah and he sold out four nights Jeez. and i was like what yeah and he i went to one of the shows mm -hmm. and was incredible to witness that life everything the lights the sound yeah. the changes between the songs so he show. does it he does it yeah. live he doesn't record it sure. which is sure. incredible so we got into studio the next day after the show after i was hangover after in new york in new york yeah so we go into republic studios um he brings his crew he's got like three security guards jeez I, and they take shifts mm. so the other one will go sleep for now and the other one will come and they're all nice people such welcoming people mm. um so yeah we worked on one song i started writing a song i went to the piano and i was like i was intimidated at first i was like yeah. this guy's a big deal and mm. i'm this little small south african you know you know people don't know about me mm. so i'm coming there with that i'm nervous but i know that I'm going to do me. I'm going to be me. Yeah, because deep down inside, you know, regardless of how big a star in front of you might be, mm. deep down inside, you know you're hot, though. Mm. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm hot, and, though. And, and that shit will always come through for you yeah. when you're feeling yourself. <laughs> Literally. I think. And also, I was I was tired yeah. in that week. I was tired in that week. Yeah. Because um, I had just done so many, so many studio uh, sessions sure. and I was I mean New York City is is a blast yeah like you can't go there and sleep you can't do yeah. that yeah. Yeah. you yeah. cannot go to New York and just chill you wanna be in the midst of people mm -hmm. party you mm -hmm. wanna mm -hmm. chat to it's amazing New York is amazing um, so we were in the studio and I started playing a song on the piano on the grand piano and he was like bro let's start this song because he had another song in mind mm -hmm. and um, I think that one is called Something about a guy going close towards the sun. Eric. Eric? Huh? Just say it. Icarus. Yeah. Icarus is this is this um, myth. Sure. Um, so basically, he flew so high towards the sun that he burnt. Oh, yes, yes. So yes, we yes. wrote a song called that. Um, and then we wrote Real Love, which is the one that's coming out in, um, in literally. He played that at Oshuaia the other day. And people lost their fucking minds. So when you see a video like that of your song that is not out yet being played by Martin Garrix at that level of his career, again I ask, when do you stop pinching yourself? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's wild. That's the wildest shit. It's yeah. so wild to think yeah. about. But I'm like... I, I'm so, I'm moving. Yeah. I'm thinking about the next thing. Yeah. Like now we're planning on releasing Real Love and I'm thinking, okay, let's finish the other record. Yeah. Yeah. Or like, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about my music video for the next song. Sure. I'm sure. like, I'm already past that button. Mm -hmm. It's so crazy to kind of look back and be like, I'm here. Mm -hmm. This is where I am. What's mom saying? She's so proud. Yeah. She's so proud. And she always tells me she's so proud. Mm. She came to one of the shows the other day. Um, I had a show in, ha in Hogsback. Yeah. Do you know where Hogsback is? Mm -mm. No one knows where Hogsback is. <laughs> but it's like so beautiful. It's like in the mountains. It's mm. in, um, I think it's close to East London. Ah, uh, okay. Um, and she came because she's coming from... Um, okay, so, so mom has seen you at work. Yeah, at she level. came, yeah, at this level. Yeah. So she came and she saw me. She was crying the whole show. Oh. She was crying <laughs> the whole show. And I was brought to tears. It was so beautiful. Yeah. Um, she's very proud. She's mm. so proud of me. That's amazing. Yeah. And then as one does, sometimes you get called to do a Beckham wedding. Yes, sir. So when Beckhams are trying to get a hold of 
and my Esau. Like, who do they call? Mm. <laughs> so, let me tell you the story. Tell us the story. Um, <laughs> there's a funny story in the story. Okay. So, it was the, um, I think it was Republic CEO. Okay. So, they reached out to Republic CEO and they were like, hey, we, wa- we want some an upcoming artist to come sing in our wedding mm. um, so that we can give them exposure. Mm. Um, and they, I actually did a, I did an audition for them. There's a song that they wanted me to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's something about wings, but it's an old song. Okay. Um, it was Jeez, like, so, so you had to audition. I auditioned. Jeez. I auditioned, you know, and I had to like sing the song and then, cause it's, it's high end. Serena Williams is there. Yeah. Yeah. Tommy Hilfiger. Can't fuck around. Like you can't, like <laughs> yeah. it's one of those things. Like, <laughs> it's one of those things. It's the people that are influential. Sure. So I did that. And um, I sent them through, and they were like, "We love it. We want you to do our first dance, our our father and daughter dance." Jeez. And then they were like, "Wait, no, but we want you for our first dance as well." Come on. So I sang. Were you charging huh? per song? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I didn't even charge. I didn't charge. Which is still fine. I didn't charge at all. It's still fine. And I was, and then they blessed me. Yeah. They blessed me with something. Yeah. And I was like. I mean, I kind of, I was like, okay, I'm going to play this. I'm going to play this really cool. And I'm also going to be very grateful for this moment. And I will feel blessed. Yeah. And I just did it. And I was, it was the most thrilling thing. And they blessed me, man. They like gave me a check in an envelope. They're like, hey, here's some dollars for you. My first dollars ever that I've ever made. They're like, here's some dollars for your open. I'm like, oh my God. Was it more than what you would have charged? Definitely. <laughs> well, yeah, not now, but maybe then. <laughs> Maybe then. What kind of doors does a gig like that open for you? Where you realize that I'm now here in because of that gig. Relationships. Yeah. Because I know that if I go to New- to LA or New York, I know that I, c- I can have... Nick- I can text her. I mean, I texted I text them the other day. And, so um, it's them. Oh, Nicola and Nicola Paltz, Beckham. And Brooklyn. And Brooklyn. Yeah. So they're the married couple. Yes. So I, I have a number, so... I was texting about going to the, they had, um, I think it was like an after dinner thing, sure. after the wedding. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, I'm going to come. And they're like, mm. okay, can't wait to see you there. Sure. And I was like, oh no, I'm not in LA that time. Mm. I, I read everything wrong. I was like, oh, I was so sad. Okay, fine. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of like, it builds really nice relationships. And there's people, there's other musicians that were there that I know. And also, um, I played at this other place called Winston House yeah. in LA, in, um, where is it? What's that? What's that? It's like in front of the beach, Santa Monica. Okay. In Santa Monica. So I played I played there the other day because of someone that I met at the Beckham wedding. Jeez. That's the crazy part yeah, about it. Yeah. It's a relationship to build. And that is why you can afford to do gigs like that for free. Mm-hmm. Of course. Of course. Of because course. it all adds up. Mm-hmm. And in fact, you can't even quantify the levels you can now get to because of a wedding like that. Yeah. Because someone will look at you and say, what would you do it for free? Why would you do it for free? Yeah. Yeah. You I mean, I was like, I was kind of in that situation, but I was like, okay, no, let me, let me just do it. Yes, sir. Mm. So it was beautiful. So you say your spirit animal is the elephant. The elephant. Talk oh. to us about that. In love was my clan name. Yes, sir. Um, my father's clan name, my father's uh, forefathers, and yeah. father's forefathers, forefathers. Mm. Um, so it's, it's, it's in the bloodline. Mm. And I think when I look at myself and I look at an elephant, I'm like, I kind of see the similar qualities of like the resilience. Mm. You like this majestic, huge animal, sure. but inside you like this loving and soft and sensitive mm. and tender. And I think that's, those are my kind of qualities. You know, if you look at yourself, mm. DJ Fresh, you're soft inside, but True. outside, you look like you could just punch somebody, you know. You often I wish I could. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you look like, yo, okay, this guy could do some in, damage. In, in fact, many will tell you about how elephants are very emotional. Yes. Um, mm. Elephants are loving, mm. but elephants also seek soulmates. Mm. Is that your soulmate? Uh, sorry? Is that your soulmate there? Wait, what are we looking at? What are we looking at? What are we looking at? What? Are, uh, what? are you making up for someone here? 
Let me drink my water fresh. No, drink your water quickly, as an elephant does, and then don't forget to spray it over your back. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you're a guest, like, <laughs> you're a guest, you right now. Do you have a soulmate? Are you dating? Um, no, I'm not dating. Yeah. Um, I think, though, I do have a soulmate. Mm -hmm. I think I do have, um, I have, my best friend's a soulmate. My best friend's my soulmate. My sister's my soulmate. Mm -hmm. uh, my neighbor's my soulmate. And then are you intentionally not dating? Or is just fate has it that way right now? I d that's the connotation of dating. Yeah. Um, I think when I love, I love to the to the magnitude of something that is bigger than just having a girlfriend or um, um, having that, just calling someone your girlfriend. Sure. Um, I just think, yes, I, I've i fallen in love. I've mm. felt things that I've never felt before. Sure. Um, I've, I've been with, you know, people that I want to spend the rest of my time with. Mm. I've made friends and I've made amazing people. Sure. And I feel like I'm, not, I'm I'm answering the question, but I'm also like, <laughs> do you so, get what I'm saying? Are you, so, are you currently having sex with someone? Oh <laughs> my God. Isn't this, is, is this R-rated? Guys, we need, this is PG-13, right? No? No. Um, we can take it to PG-50 if you want. I mean, you know what? Sex is very, it's, it's natural and it's healthy. Uh-huh. So, so is wanking, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and often the same result. That's why you have to collaborate to say the right thing. And, 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 and the, the, the advantage of the one is it, never, it doesn't ask you where you were last night. <laughs> <laughs> no, Fresh, let's go past this. Let's, let's talk about something else. I just wanted to ask, yes, this car, what is the meaning of it? Uh, no, you're not going to change the subject. <laughs> But it's an artwork that uh, Harrell from Soul Candy uh, bought for me on my 40th. Oh, so, wow. So, yeah. no, this, is, like, this is an artwork, bro. It's not just a, a skoro koro. So, so yeah. That, it's, it's, it looks cool. So if you're trying to buy one, you probably need to spend 30, 40, 50 grand. Are you kidding? Yeah. yeah. You can buy this or a golf one. Let's decide. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> All, all the cars well, almost bought for You candy. have to be careful with this. You have to walk around with security and everything. No, I'm, I'm good. Oh, wow. If they take it, we'll buy another one. Well, I mean, it could have been a Land Rover. but Absolutely. It's, it's, uh, it, but it is a Land Rover. Is it? Yeah. Is this a Land Rover? It is. Uh, but don't worry, I'm not going to ask you about sex in <laughs> <laughs> I did well. I did well, guys. No, no, you didn't do well. I am opting to move on. We're going to play a game. The game is... Loiso the musical. Mm -hmm. If your life was a musical. Yes, sir. Uh, if one of the channels wake the fuck up and do the Loiso the musical. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's so funny. Yes. Actually, what? I just want 10%. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. Loiso the musical. Loiso the musical. I love that. Let's go to your childhood. What song? takes you back to your childhood. Dara ses figile, ses figile, ses corna la dara ses figile, ses figile. It's been a long, long time. I forgot the words, but I used to. Was that Adila? Adila. That was Adila. Adila, Adila. And my sister had a whole CD yes. and we used to play that thing. Oh, wow. We used to play, I used to sing along to that. That was yes, sir. my favorite part of the day. Yes, sir. Listening to Adina every day. Lois, Lois saw the musical. What was that song that first showcased your voice even to yourself where you thought, oh shit, I think I could oh. sing? Um, oh, oh, it was a church song. Yes, sir. Um, I was in church and my cousin was like, um, she was supposed to sing a lead, a lead in the in the church song. It was a yeah. youth day thing. Sure. And she was supposed to sing a lead. Yeah. And then she was like, "I'm sick," because she was sick. Yeah. Can Luisa sing? And then yeah. Um, how did it go? Cecilia Cona Ezulini Cecilia Cona. 
Ezuli ni apoku kanda onsende si we tu oasi si fela. The church was, yeah. It was it was like something I've never. I can feel it myself. So right. imagine what the church felt. That church. <laughs> It was like the, something that I've never seen before. You have a manager in tears. <laughs> oh, so sorry. It literally brought everybody to tears. The church, the whole, yeah. the whole, the way that the church was supposed to go, yeah. it changed the script. Jeez. It changed the script. And everybody in the church was praying and everybody was jumping and everybody was Jeez. filled with joy. Yeah. And like when I saw that, I was like, I was still a child, so I didn't know. Yes. Looking back to it, it was... How old were you? I was like 12. Yeah. I was like 12. Jeez, bro. And people were so touched yeah. that it was like, it was the talk of the town. This boy can sing. This boy's got an angelic voice. Yeah. This boy. And I think from there on, I just I was like, this is what I have to do. It's, yeah. Look at this. How, how were you in the playground on Monday at school? <laughs> <laughs> Walking around. Oh, the no one cares. Kids don't <laughs> I moved to church, guys. <laughs> kids didn't even, kids didn't even care, you know. Yeah. But um, yeah, even in primary school, sure. I used to go to classes. They used to send me to classes every time, and I used to sing in front of classes. So you were the go-to guy. I was a go-to guy. Sure. I sure. was a go-to guy. If you were a girl, you'd have played Serafina in the school play. <laughs> <laughs> even though, even if I would have still, I would have still. Like, we think Loisa must play Serafina. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, it was a beautiful, beautiful journey. Lois, so the musical, you think you're in love. I think I'm in love. Yeah. Maybe in your teens. Ooh, ooh, what, what ooh. was the song? Um, her eyes, her eyes, make stars look like they're not shining. Her hair, her hair, first perfectly without her trying. She's so beautiful, and I tell her every day. And then girls would go crazy. They would go crazy. I used to send voice notes. <laughs> voice notes were my thing. <laughs> I used to send voice notes, I know. Once I start singing, it's over. Dudes are sending news, you're sending voice notes. <laughs> like, get it, I the just same sing. response. And it was the same song over and over and yes, over. Yes, sir. Yeah. Lois to the musical, getting over heartbreak. What's the song that carried through your heartbreak? Oh, wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, I think maybe in the recent years, mm -hmm. um, that's when I like, felt the most heartbreak. Oh, sure. Um, I think it was uh, to build a home. Mm -hmm. um, there is a house built out of stone, wooden floors, walls. And it's like it's it, this song is about there was a house, yeah. and um, but now it's it's shattered. It's thrown down the drain. Mm -hmm. I used to bring me to tears all the time. Jeez. Yeah, that was my heartbreak song. That's why I made seasons actually. Even seasons, is my heartbreak mm -hmm. song. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What brings you to tears now? Now, whether it's music or it, or otherwise, love and affection and like, um, just appreciation for people. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think my tears are different than they were a year ago, or two years ago. Sure, I think I've learned to see things and mm -hmm. I've learned to understand that this doesn't have to make me lose my mind yes, sir. or like I don't have to go into my room and lock myself up I don't have to I just have to face these things mm -hmm. and understand that they pass um, and yeah man I think the tears are different and I just True. I think I cry for joy more than I've ever cried for pain I have cried for pain mm -hmm. so that's I think that's a learning and growing curve sure. yeah. um, it's the end of the musical Loi saw the musical it's your victory song. Yeah. You have won. Yeah. You have won this thing called life. You've won the girl. You're, yeah. in, you're in your dream car. Yes, sir. <laughs> what song is playing or what song are you singing? Um, so in this, um, it's definitely Kanye West. Yeah. It's definitely Father I Stretch. Sure. Um, oh, beautiful morning. Best down the morning, babe. Nothing in the morning. And also, can't tell me nothing. So I would 
Yeah, definitely Kanye West. Do a mashup. <laughs> <laughs> definitely any Kanye West song gets me there. Sure. Yes, sir. When last did you pray, Boiso? I pray every day. Sure. I pray every day. Mm. Um, I don't. I don't usually. I don't necessarily kneel on my on my knees and like. Yeah. Put my hands together, sure. but like I'm always like sitting down and saying, "Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for these trees, and thank you, God, for the air that I breathe. Mm. Thank you for the things that I I go through. Thank you for love, and thank you for so much kindness in my heart that I can give to people. Mm. I'm grateful for this voice that can change people's lives. Mm. Um, I'm always praying. What last always did you praying. What last did you pinch yourself about your career so far? Um, Definitely this moment. Mm. I think definitely this moment. Um, oh, meeting me. Okay. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks, dog. I appreciate you, though. I appreciate that. Mama, I've arrived, dog. <laughs> and also, I have to say, congrats for this, man. This is beautiful. No, thanks. Um, the fact that you're coming into, you're venturing into other things. Yes, sir. And we're seeing you now. You're not hiding behind the screen. Very important. <laughs> you're not hiding behind the screen, which is great. Yes, sir. And thank you for inviting me here. It's, it's been awesome to yes, to you. When last did you feel fear for whatever reason? Oh, um, I was at the river. Yeah. I was at the river with my neighbor. Um, so we were swimming and we were like, and they were swimming. Yeah. So I'm, I was the only black guy there. Sure. So I'm like, okay, these people can swim like fish, bro. And I don't know how to swim. And I was like, there's absolutely nowhere and we had life jackets for sure we're, um, we're life jackets and I was I was sitting there looking at the water and I'm like am I gonna face my fear and jump in this water now yeah and figure out figure it out later sure or and also find out if I'm going to heaven or hell yeah you know? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think I was gonna die because I knew I was I had help around me oh uh, yes 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 so yes. I was like, okay I'm gonna jump in this water without a life jacket yeah and I'm gonna remember how to swim for sure from the first time I ever got taught like a lesson or anything yes yeah, sir um and then I stood there for about maybe 10 to 15 minutes staring at the water thinking whether I'm gonna face my fears today or I'm just gonna let this day go, and it's just gonna be a ripple effect on everybody around me, like my family, my kids. One day, yeah. my um, you know, my brothers and sisters. Like, I need to set an example. So, so it was a big moment. It was a big moment. It was like I need to change. I need to change. I need to break the cycle sure. of us black people not being able to swim, mm. or like me and my family not being able to swim. Or if you get, if you drown, you drown. Sure. It's it's always about, it's gonna be the ancestors mm. that mm. You, you drown because that lake has got people mm. that are underground that they don't want you to be there or sure. you're being called into mm. this mm. other world. And like, I'm like, okay, no, I'm not gonna do that. Rather let me, rather let me swim. Let me, let me try. So you jumped in? I jumped in. Yeah. I jumped in and I swam. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, five minutes said, like, okay, guys, I'm going down. Life jacket. Life jacket. Life jacket. And they give me a life jacket. And I stayed in the water. Yeah. And it was the most thrilling experience because I, I feel like I faced something inside of me. And it's liberating. It's liberating to yeah. be able to do something you've always been scared to do. Sure. So now I'm going to go for swimming lessons and make sure that I can. Now I'm in trouble every time you see water. It's like, guys, hold my beer. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go swim here quickly. Let me go swim <laughs> Oh, there's a, Let me just take a dip. Well, it, uh, there's a full <laughs> bathtub. Hold my beer. <laughs> oh, Fanny. Yes, sir. When last did you feel like giving up? Oh, God. Oh, 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 that was funny. <laughs> um, feel like giving up? Yeah. I think maybe, uh, maybe just maybe two weeks ago. <laughs> like, Why? I always feel like giving up. I always, there, there always comes a point where I'm like, okay, there's a lot happening. It's seasons, like you it, said. It, it, it's seasons. It's yeah. seasons. And I'm always like, I'm on a, but I, there's no way I'm going to give up now. Sure. Um, there's no way, even if I tell myself I'm going to, or maybe, no, so just go back to go study. We, or, we won't let you. So it's just, <laughs> we I appreciate that. Yeah. And um, I want to go sing at the boat. So, no, I'm never going to stop. This is yeah. it. This mm. is where I'm supposed to be. Mm. And I'm going to be one of the biggest artists in the world because of the fact that I, I f first of all, I like feel this urge to be, mm. to create music that is, can cross borders mm. and change people's lives. So I think in my intention, I'm going to move with it and just be real with myself. Sure. And, and I think just to remind you, that what you did in that church when you were 12 mm. wasn't a mistake. 
And uh, what you did in that church, you do for a lot of people right now with your music. Mm -hmm. So your ministering is beyond that small church now. Mm -hmm. So you need to remind yourself of that every time you want to give up. Thank you. That is not as bigger than you now. Mm -hmm. In fact, it, 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 in, in fact, it's, 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 it's unfortunately whether you had a bad day or a good day, we don't care anymore. Yeah. We, we want you to sing. Yeah. And we want you to minister yeah. and we want you to heal people with that voice, dude. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And even if you were to die, God is going to send you back. It's like, you're not dying, man. <laughs> yeah, man. And I, I feel that every day. And I feel yeah. that every day. And I think that's what carries me off. Sure. Is that I know the effect that sure. I have on people or mm. this gift has on people. Absolutely. When else did you lose your temper? Ooh. <laughs> um... I think it's been a minute. Yeah. It's been a minute. It's sure. been, I've grown a lot. Mm. I've grown a lot. I think I've gotten over a lot of things um, and learning. I think I've learned how to take a moment and a count to 10. Count to 10. I mean, I was a, I was a rowdy boy, yeah. you know, going out with the boys. We, we you know, get into fights. Right into all, man. You know, like <laughs> with the boys, you are pretty let's, you know. Um, but, yeah, we just not. I'm not in that space in my life. I think I'm more chilled and mm. more relaxed. And I haven't lost my temper in, I think, maybe in about a year or so. When last did you get into a role, eh? It was like last year. <laughs> it was like, so, like, recently? <laughs> last no. year, was like nine months ago. Mm. Maybe two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> what was the fight about? Um, it was someone like throwing something at me. Yeah. It was, it was at a bar somewhere. Sure. I'm um, in PE, and someone threw. Um, I think a phone at me and then it just went on my lip and then I was like, bro, you just threw your phone at me. Yeah. And it was like, no, bro, I don't care. Jeez. And then it was, we went outside and then someone said something. Yeah. And then I spilled it with my drink. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then it was just the whole thing. Who won? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you know the answer to this. I don't assume. It is definitely, like, it wasn't, it was, we didn't, we didn't but also, hands. Because also, because the thing is also, my worry is because you sing, you might have turned into a Bollywood movie <laughs> and sung at this guy. <laughs> don't mess with me now, motherfucker. Oh, yeah. You're the fool this time. <laughs> no, no, motherfucker. Oh, oh. And then it starts yeah. going crazy. Um, yeah. If it was a musical and you lost the fight, what song would uh, come out of your mouth? Oh. <laughs> mm, if it was a musical. Yeah. Lot you saw freestyle after losing a fight. Freestyle. Yeah. It would be something deep, though. Yeah. It would be. Um, I woke up this morning feeling lonely. I wondered. Why I had this emptiness inside me. I thought about it and it wasn't real until I got punched in the face and I lost the fight. I got punched in the face and I lost the fight. I got punched in the face and I lost the fight. Now I know why I woke up today feeling lonely. The curtains close. Now do it with a lisp because you lost your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> this 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 podcast is unhinged, guys. This podcast is unhinged. I think we must cancel it. This, <laughs> I know it just started, but no, fresh, nah. I'm showing people just how talented you are, so you're welcome. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I take time writing music. P that's pity you can't sing with a lift, because that, that was the ultimate. <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> no, I can't do that. My dude, what's next for you? Where do people catch you on a stage? Brand new music. In fact, your, your brand new track with Garrick is coming out now, right? This is... Wow! What a week. What a week. Celebrity guest. Celebrity guest. It's coming out of the next couple of weeks. Well, when, in fact, well, no, I kind of, we'll just beep it. Yeah, it's, yeah. Oh, we'll just beep perfect, it. perfect, perfect. Yeah. Um, and I'm focusing on I'm focusing on on, my, on building this brand and building sure. the music and mm -hmm. building. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I'm looking forward to a tour that I'm about to do. Okay. Um, with a really great brand, which I'm hoping is going to come through. Okay. Um, we're still on the talks for that because oh. doing a tour is so expensive. Who are they? Let's put them under pressure right now. Huh? 
No, they need to pay me for this. Oh no. <laughs> no, I'm promoting your brand. Um, so we're waiting for them yeah. to say something and then we're going to go forward with it. Oh. But it's an amazing brand, man. Yes, Aesthetically, it's it's great for me as mm. well. So I'm, I'm excited to do my first ever tour sure. because I've never done and done my own show. Um, so it'll be great to see how many people actually come in physical form. But obviously, you'll also do a homecoming though, right? As in go home, take her home. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was thinking about that and yeah. I was thinking when is the right time for me after I drop an album or even now. Or, um, but we are talking about it. It's, mm. it's something mm. that we're thinking about. Sure. At this very moment, what emotions are you feeling this very moment? Grateful, man. Mm. I'm grateful for the life that I have. Sure. I'm grateful for the fact that I can wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to sit with DJ Fresh and we're just going to talk about the thing that we love the most. Mm. And that's music and that's arts and that's... Sure, bad contracts. That... <laughs> We love we love this. This is this is something educational that yeah. people are gonna learn from. Like sure. kids that are coming up and also want to make it. It's it's not it's not as easy as it looks. And you might see us on TV. As Yanga said, TV So we literally trying to do something great for the world, do something great for ourselves, and fulfill our purpose in sure. life, which is something that I'm really grateful for. My dude, we're going to keep cheering you on. Thank you. We're going to keep uh, yelling your name from atop long, tall trees. Mm. And uh, we're going to keep reminding people that we have to back you mm. because you, you need to win. Yeah. You not winning is us Thank losing. You Thank you. You know what I mean? Mm. So it's in everyone's interest that you win. Yeah. And, 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 and sadly, you know, our people don't always support the way you think they would. Mm. You know, you might have 100,000 people following you on your social media. But if you drop a brand new song, maybe only 10,000 of them will support you. Yes, sir. Which for me doesn't make sense. Mm. Because every single person that claims to love you mm. must do something to make sure you win. Yeah. Because when you win, we all win, dude. And that's something we think about. And, and once we get into that culture of we will support you and prop you up and make yeah. sure you fucking win. And I'm grateful for the people that do. Yes. That yeah. actively do it. And the sooner we can turn that into a culture, trust me, there's no way this country can lose. I love that, Fresh. There's I no way that. this country can lose. Yeah. Yeah. And I think us as artists as well, yeah. supporting each other, come, go, going to each other's shows. Absolutely. We would always, we love that. Yeah. We love to see other artists coming up. And I think I've started this thing where I'm like, I want to support mm -hmm. and I want to go because I have the capacity to show. Sure. And Absolutely. I'm I'm able to inspire you even on stage. Like you see yes, a, someone that is in the music industry and then sees you like, oh my God, yes, I could, I'm getting inspired to do this. Yeah. So that's great. Lois, so love your work, my dude. Thank love you, your DJ. energy, love everything about you. Thank you, Putin Amrabule. And, and um, yeah, man, we'll see you. Dude, fly. Shout out, man. Shout out to the dude, DJ fly. Fresh, DJ Fresh podcast. It's going to be the number one podcast in the game. Yes, sir. I'm calling that. From from your mouth. I'm to, calling to, that. To, to God's I ears. am calling that. Yes, sir. Thank you, Fresh. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, Loiso is about to leave the building. <laughs> we are done, but sadly, by now, many of you will have heard of the passing of legendary businessman and uh, South African Raymond Ackerman in a time when many of his contemporaries were towing the line, he stood up and spoke against things like the Group Areas Act and the Homelands policies. He was a reminder that just because others around you are doing things a certain way doesn't mean you have to do it that way too, even when it comes to making money. Or as he put it, doing good is good business. So it is in that spirit of appreciation and resilience that we wish you a wow week ahead. September is Suicide Awareness Month. Please know that you are not alone you are not lost and you are not weak for asking for help. Have a great week in spite of yourselves. We are out of here. Shout out to the Africa Podcast Network, to Amp Studios um, for hanging out with us and allowing us to use that beautiful space. Pezula works for the cinematography. Our engineer, Otis the Floor Fraser, he does all of our imaging. And our guests representing the Eastern Cape, the Cosa Nostra, the Tosa Mafia, Tatum Konzo, and Loiso.
Creative Director Kuvesh Mohan, show producer Kela Somudisa Geng. Email us at waw at africapodcastnetwork.com. And please don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to have a great week in spite of yourselves. <laughs>